This is Shelley Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the 40th Annual New Orleans Investment Conference 2014. I have with me Frank Holmes, U.S. Global Investor, Inc., symbol G-R-O-W. Frank, welcome back to SNN Live. It's great to be back. It's good to have you. Let's get right into it. For those folks, uh, Frank is a featured speaker at this conference, a keynote speaker. Just for um, giggles, Tell us what you're speaking about tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'll give a keynote about my travels all around the world, from Asia to recently last week I was in Rome uh, and with 150 CEOs. And I'll try to give a flavor for what the pulse was coming out of Europe. And then I will speak about gold at my lunch. And then in the evening at 6 o'clock is going to be a whole presentation on managing expectations, understanding volatility. Frank, I have to share with you. I come from a financial background. Who better than you for me to say this? I come from training of buying low and selling high. I'm looking around, I'm seeing a lot of lows. I'm not seeing any highs. That's years ago. What would you do if you were me? Well, I think in resources in particular, then in emerging markets, they've been down for three years. If you look at China, even though it seems now a bottom as a, uh, the, sh the shares are rising, uh, I think it's important that these stocks are paying you dividends two times what you can earn in a 10-year government bond three times what you can earn a five-year government bond, and they have growth prospects. So there are some magnificent opportunities in the resource sector. You know, you bring up China. About two weeks ago, Alibaba went public, and $240 billion came out of the market and went into the market cap of Alibaba. I said to myself, this looks like a high to me. What do you think about something like that? When is the, when is the trickle-down effect going to come back into resource companies? Well, when you want to follow manufacturing and you really want to say what's happening in China, you want to follow Alibaba because he basically outsources to all of the manufacturing companies. He is a platform that's eBay on steroids for manufacturing companies. So it's always been useful for us to have a, a flavor for the dimensions of depth of their capital markets. Now, looking forward, I think that resources that everyone's so bearish, and I understand this whole drop in the price of oil, and I believe a lot of it's political, just like going back in history when Reagan hooked up with Saudis to get the price of oil down to break the back of Russia. Isn't it interesting, ever since the Ukraine-Crimean War, all of a sudden the price of oil starts declining and the Saudis are helping put oil into the system. So I think that we're going to see Russia basically have to come back and beg for, for repair of their economy. Uh, they did this with Iran. Uh, so I think that that's something structural we have to understand, politics and economics. What's really important is that when we get the synchronized growth, like we had in 03, 04, 05, and 06 of Europe, China, and America, you'll see oil at $130 a barrel. When the large cap resource companies started to take write downs of billions of dollars, some of which were billions in a quarter, didn't that show telltale signs that someday they're not going to continue to develop their own properties, they're going to abandon them, and then they're going to come back and have to look at these resource companies, these emerging growth, these juniors. A am I right? Well, I, I, you are right, and I think but it may take a little longer for these juniors to really get uh, some critical mass behind them. Uh, and for several reasons. Uh, many of the projects are so difficult, the pipeline and the capital expenditure, with, when we need clean air and clean water, but the environmental costs are so great that you're going to have to have substantially higher commodity prices to justify that build out. Where you're seeing it, where there's immediate cash flow like MLPs for building a pipeline, that's immediate cash flow, that money is quickly raised in America to develop. When you have this European contingency and you're listening to what those voices are saying to you and you have that global concept, what do you think is going on that's going to affect both North America and South America in terms of resources? Because let's bring it back home. Well, we have to get rising GDP per capita. And when we look at real GDP after the inflation in any country, then we have a fact for the past three years that it's declined from 5.4% at the peak of 2011 down to 3%.
So it was looked like it was going to start to turn this year, that we were going to get global real GDP back to 3.5% until Russia went to the Ukraine, and then all of a sudden all the battles back and forth in Europe, and it slowed down. Uh, how that will resolve next year, I think there'll be some resolutions that'll take place that'll get this global economic growth back on track. So I'm going to ask the question that our entire viewer, viewer audience wants to know the answer to. What do you see in 2015, Frank Holmes? Well, I see that we're in the presidential election cycle, and in every, historically in the latter two years, the stock market in the U.S. does well. Uh, I see that there's such a pushback in Europe to have fiscal uh, change and disciplines, lower tax rates, changing employment issues, which I've commented recently regarding Italy. Uh, I think that there are very positive factors that will come into the uh, economic global activity. Now, you mentioned to me earlier, and I wanted to mention it to you on air, about Nerex. You want to talk to me about that? Well, everyone's so worried, and everyone's talking about bubbles, and everyone's got a Ph.D. in bubbleology. <laughs> That's piled high and deep. Uh, and bubbles always come from excessive leverage. They, and there's not excessive leverage in the housing market like we had in 2004, 5, and 6. And there's not excessive leverage in banks globally. So I don't see this big bubble they're talking about. But what I do see, if you are fearful, is our fund, it's a short-term municipal, it's all AAA rated, it's never, not had a down year, touch wood, and since I created this fund, I have a lot of my own safe money in it, and it has a safe $2 NAV, so there's there's been very low penny volatility, that's the place, there's no drama in that fund to park your cash if you're worried about the overall stock market. So that's the no drama fund. The no drama nerex n-e-a-r-x n-e-a-r-x the no drama fund for actors out there we're sorry you'll have to you'll have to go to hollywood so um let's talk about um u.s global for a minute uh what can uh, you tell our investors that are watching right now how do they get more closely involved and learn more about what you're doing well first of all you go to usfunds.com and subscribe to the investor alert it's produced by our investment team. It's produced every Friday evening by the investment team. And it's a game film analysis. It looks at the past week, the strengths, the weakness that it impacted a portfolio. And then it looks going to the future, what could be an opportunity and threat. And we do this every week. And we have 40,000 readers with that and Frank Talk in 170 countries. So for investors to get a, a pulse of both gold, natural resources, equity domestically, and what's happening globally, that is a great free subscription they can subscribe to. Now, I always like to wrap up with a website. Is there any website you want to give out, even if you repeat yourself? I want to make sure our investors know. Well, Shelley, it's just great that you asked that because uh, it is simple. U-S-F-U-N, fun, D-S, usfunds.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Holmes, U.S. Global Investors, Inc., Grow, Nearex, the No Drama Fund. I'm Shelley Kraft. This is SNN Live. We're at the 40th Annual New Orleans Investment Conference 2014. Frank, thanks for coming on. It's great to be here. Good to see you.